up guys? This is Caitlin from Caitlin Says and I just wanted to do a video recap of yesterday's episode of Legend of Korra which was entitled Civil Wars Part 2 and I thought this episode was really great because it just had a ton of action in it um, you know towards the end but you also get to cover some like the serious parts that we love about Legend of Korra that I was saying in my last recap last week. They end up finding Iki, she's hiding out with a bunch of cute little adorable baby appas um, that she gives the most adorable names like Ju Juniper, Skyflower, something like that. I just thought it was so, so cute because they just had the little baby up a face like a little puppy. Um, so I loved that. <laughs> um, but I thought it was nice because they explored. As it gets to learn something from his daughter and his daughter gets to learn something from her dad. Apparently, they have like the same, you know, family dynamics going on with their brother and sister. Uh, what I thought was pretty interesting how they made that happen. So and they make up and the cutest thing was their mom, um, Iki's mom was all like, kids, do you have something you want to say to your sister? And Milo's all like, Iki, we're glad you're back. It just looked hilarious because he has the cutest face. I don't know where he gets his head shaped from. I don't know if it's from his dad because the guy's got like a football head. But it's adorable. Um, but yeah, so they make up and then Tenzin, you know, apologizes to his family, his brother and sister, and they all make up. Um, but I thought what was cool is that while they're, you know, while Tenzin still is with Iki in their little hiding spot in that cave area, um, Bumi finds his dad's statue and he starts talking to it. And he's just like, you know, dad, I know I'm not the airbender that you wanted, but I've tried my best to keep the world safe and I hope you've made you, I've made you proud. Uh, so I thought that was really just sweet how they included that. You know, it's really good the way they're showing each character that I, I'm just loving. Um, I've always feel that whenever I watch these Legend of Core episodes that they're like a mini movie. You know, a mini 20 minute movie or like a movie that's spliced up, you know? It's just, it's so well done. I love it. I know, like, I was looking when I was watching it they have like the, the year guidelines, whatever, like what, a certain age for a child to watch, so seven. I was like, a seven year old would not catch the stuff that's going on in this episode sometimes. <laughs> but I mean, hey, if they think that, uh, fast forward, Korra's mom and dad and the rebels and Varric are supposed to be on trial, but Varric's hiding right now. <laughs> but they're on trial for treason, the judge is fixed, they end up getting a death sentence, but then after he throws down his sentence to the mom and dad, Kor gets all pissed off right in front of the whole crowd in the courtroom. And she's all like, if you take their lives, I'm going to take yours. Straight up threatening to kill him in front of everyone. So I feel like she still is really, really rash. She's not thinking things through. But Unalak trying to be all nice. He's like, well, calm down, calm down. Let me talk to him. And of course, the judge was fixed. It's been a friend of his for a long time. So he he knows that this is a setup. He told him everything to say. Unalak told the judge everything that he wanted him to say. Even straight down to the sentence and him, you know, Unalak going up and asking him to change it because he wants Korra to think that he's still on her side. He wants to keep Korra on her, his side too. So it's just really, there's a lot that was shown. So. Um, after later, later on, Kor goes up and she's all like, gonna threaten the judge. She runs up with Naga while the judge is driving and straight up totals the guy's car, rips off his door and pulls him out and he's like, what do you want? What do you want? And she's like, it's not what I want, it's what Naga wants. And Naga wants you to let my parents out of jail. It was pretty funny because she like sticks his head in Naga's mouth and everything, the guy's freaking out. But it's even shown that apparently Unlock set up his own brother to be banished way, way, way back when they were younger. So when way before when he was still at the Northern Water Tribe. So he was up to be chief. He set him up so he could be chief, so Unlock could be chief. So it's just really like a real big power struggle. Um, so she goes and threatens she threatens Unlock after finding this out, like, you're gonna let them out. Or, you know, I'm not going to open the northern spirit spirit portal or whatever it's called. And he's like, I don't need you. You've served your purpose. I don't need you for that anymore. So they get into this huge old fight. They end up taking this boat. 
um, to go and try to get her dad because Ulak sends him off to the Northern Water Tribe with a bunch of the other rebels. And they go rescue him, they tell him everything that's going on. So Varric, being a nice guy that he is, he, you know, used their plane and everything and they did this like cool, like firebending thing to prepare the plane because he forgot a runway for some reason. So they end up dropping them off on the Water Tribe shores and he's like, we're gonna teach my brother a lesson, it's time. So he's gonna go fight them off and he tells Kor, like, you can't fight with us, you need to go to the city council. Um, and get help. So hopefully, hopefully that means next episode that we will get to see more of Korra's world and maybe we can go back to Capital City. I'm not sure if that's where they're at because um, they did show Zuko's grandson Iroh in that, for, I think it was the first episode of the first season um, with that whole, with those ships and everything because he's a general of the army. Um, so hopefully maybe we'll see Chief Beifong again, because we learned so much about her last season, now it's like she's not even mentioned. I really want them to say who her dad is. Maybe Osaka. So the episode closes with Eska chasing them. Um, long story short, Bolin's trying to break up. It's totally failing, because now he's engaged. So he takes off on the ship when they go to take, like, when they go to rescue her, her dad and the rest of the rebels. And... She starts chasing them, water bending, and she looks so scary. So I don't know how they're going to work that in. Um, if they're going to keep like her being an angry ex-girlfriend or something like that, because I think she kind of left at the altar. So they were supposed to get married at sunset, and if I remember correctly, the episode ended at sunset. So she, he just pretty much ditched her. Um, so we'll see, though, what happens. Hopefully, hopefully we can go back to Capital City or at least see Iroh, which I'm sure that's who she'll have to go to. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Tune in on Monday. I'll be doing a Music Monday sort of thing with a friend of mine. I'll be collabing with her and I'll put her link down below in the description box. And uh, yeah, so I will see you guys then.